Hi everybody, I'm Ann Churchland and this is my laboratory at UCLA in Los Angeles, California. My lab studies the neural circuits that support decision making and today I'm going to show you around my lab so you can see what people are doing and we'll dig deep into one setting called wide field imaging that we use to measure activity across the dorsal cortex as animals are making decisions. Come with me. We'll start up over here where two students in the lab, Chakshun and Alex, are doing an experiment to understand the uh, neural responses that support decision making. Okay, so when the animals are doing the task, as you can see, let's look at these boxes. At the same time, we are using the neural pixel system to do the e phase neural activity recording. And you can see here on this monitor, here are some neural spikes we got from the animal. And while we're doing the e-phys recordings, we're also recording uh, from above, we're recording the animal from above so that we can use software like Deep Lab Cut to track their movements. And remember, EFIS is one method of record recording neural activity, but another method, wide field imaging, we'll be talking about shortly. Thanks, guys. Yep. And over here is Lucas. He's finding a way to measure animal behavior, and it's going to show you the kind of booth that we use so that we can have animals um, in a situation where they're comfortable and can make good decisions. So we're, we're exposing uh, the animals to our behavioral tests in a, in a sound isolated booth uh, with uh, minimal lighting conditions. And here we can also video check the animals from the bottom or the top if you want. Um, and we can present different stimuli. And you can see here also, like this is the computer, which is the core, like the computer rig, which is the core element to control behavioral stimuli and behavior. Um, and you'll see more of this later. Thanks, Lucas. Over here, we have another postdoc in the lab, Mike, who's also studying decision making. He has here a behavioral rig that's the same one that you'll see in the moment, in a moment, in the wide field imaging rig. But because it's out of the behavioral booth, you can get a really good up close view of what it looks like. And Mike can tell you a little bit more about it. Yeah, so as you can see here, this is our head fix setup, which has a number of sensors, um, which also allows us to deliver auditory and visual stimuli. And we can put this directly in the wide field setup so that we can image neural activity while the animal uh, is performing a task. Great, Mike, thanks for telling us about your rig. Okay, now it's time to head over to the wide field rig so you can see how all these pieces fit together and we can measure neural activity in the wide field as animals are engaged in behavior. Come on. Hi, Ashley. Hello. This is Ashley. She's an SRA in the lab, and she's an expert in mouse behavior. She's going to show you what this rig looks like, the same one you saw a moment ago. Now you'll get to see what it looks like in action. Hello. So this is where I put my animals every single day, and I train them every single day. So just like Mike said, we have two spouts um, with two audio visual stimuli coming from the left side and the right side. So the mice have to make their decision by either lift licking on the left or the right. And we also have this circuit board that we made to interact with the behavior. So we have like full control of the behavior. And this is connected to the computer. As you can see right here, we have the paradigm of the behavior working as well as a movie recording. And this behavior is linked to another computer that is connected to the wide field imaging. So it allows us to record activity with the wide field during behavior. And here is Joao to talk about the wide field setup. Hi, Anne. This is Joao Couto. He's a postdoc in the lab, and he's going to tell you about wide field imaging. This is a setup that was originally developed by Simon Musel when he was a postdoc in the lab, and he's a co-author on the paper um, that Joao will tell you about, where we describe this method in detail. Joao, do you want to tell the people at Neuromatch about how the light path works for wide field imaging? Sure, Anne. Let's look at it. So the setup actually consists of two different modules. There's an excitation module where we have a blue LED that sends light straight into the mouse brain. And a violet LED, also on the same module, that, uh, that sends light so that you can act for, um, for hemodynamics. And then when light reaches the cortex, it, gets, it excites a GCAM that sends green light back. So we have a filter where the light passes through, and it goes straight into a camera that we can use to then acquire data. We use some tricks to synchronize uh, data and to make that the lights alternate 
on and off between the two different wavelengths. Now, once we collect data, we this would be an example of how these data look like, where you can see the, the whole dorsal cortex of the mouse. We can then use uh, skull landmarks to align um, uh, a reference frame, like the, the Allen Atlas, and, and identify different brain areas. This would be an example over here of, uh, on, the, um, on the right uh, of uh, a mouse performing a, a decision-making task. Uh, and we can see that there's activation on, on left trials in the, in the right part of the brain. Uh, we also developed this framework for um, sort of analyzing all these data um, using a, a cloud-based platform called Neurocast. And do you want to tell us more about it? Fortunately, um, our colleagues at Columbia developed a workflow called Neurocast that allows you to do a cloud-based, to do cloud-based computing, even on really large data sets of the sort that you get with wide field imaging. So we do some of our analysis there, uh, and I'd encourage you to do the same because it's publicly available. But one last thing. So, Joao, if people are interested in building a wide field imaging setup, are they kind of just left to their own devices? Are there any resources they could use to help speed things along? Oh, I forgot about that. So we actually have a protocol where we explain how to, how to build a microscope, but also how to do hemodynamic correction and make a skull preparation so that one can image from the entire dorsal skull of the mouse. We also discuss some steps that we can do to, to analyze data on the cloud. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Joao. It was really great to hear about your wide field imaging setup and how the light path works, allowing you to collect neural signals from the brain. We're really enthusiastic about wide field imaging because it's pretty high throughput and it allows us to sample the whole dorsal cortex of the mouse, which means we can look at neural activity really broadly. So I hope you found this interesting. And if you would like to analyze some wide field data, we've made lots of our data freely available online and there's more data out there also. And you might discover something in the data that we didn't even know was there. So good luck, Neuromatch Academy. Have a great time. And I hope you learned a lot in this video about wide field imaging.